G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another video. Um, on a big video kick at the moment, as you can see. Um, trying to make up for last time around like some holidays that I got planned. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, the Rising Star race, I suppose. And uh, in particular, going through the 10 nominees that we've had so far this season. And giving a little bit of a snapshot as to what the race for the Rising Star Award actually looks like. And a little bit of information about each player. So naturally, you know, there's plenty of uh, water to go under the bridge this season in terms of football to be played out. Having said that, uh, without looking at it, I'd imagine that the winner for the Rising Star generally comes from a nominee within the first 10 rounds. Uh, I have no data to back that up, but historically speaking, you know, generally it's the players that are recognized earlier on in the season um, and then play out most of the season. I feel like you need to play for a good chunk of the season to actually be a good chance to win it as well. So as I said, what we're going to do in this video is go through the 10 nominees so far. And uh, I guess part of that will be talking about to what extent I think they could win the actual award. Before we crack into the video, guys, if I could get you to do me a little bit of a favor. If you are interested in AFL Fantasy as a concept and you're looking for an exciting new platform to potentially take your talents, uh, we'll have a look in the description below because we are in partnership with Game Day Squad, who are a new startup in this sort of space. You've probably noticed I do a weekly update on how my team is going in that competition, and it's a really cool little way to play fantasy. You get footy cards. There's a dynasty element to it as well, because you don't just recruit players for a particular season. You recruit them, and then you've got them until you get rid of them, basically. Now, if your hesitation around it is potentially that you have already missed half a season and you feel like you can't get involved, well, that's not true, because there's heaps of weekly prizes to be won. There's plenty to play for each week, and if you hit the link in the description, and just check it out, you'd be doing me a favor. But we've got a True Footy competition as well. So when you do join, make sure you sign up to the True Footy competition. It's all free. All right, let's crack into the 10 Rising Star nominees. So we'll start in chronological order and we'll start with round one, which saw Harry Sheasel get a nomination for a brilliant debut. And I saw it up close and personal uh, through a TV, but it was against my boys, the West Coast Eagles. So it sticks out in the mind. He had 34 possessions. And interestingly, uh, as I said at the time, Sheasel was sort of drafted as this crafty half forward with midfield potential. Um, so to see him parked behind the ball as a kind of loose defender uh, under Clarkson there, I thought that was an interesting move and one that paid off because he's clearly equipped to play pretty much every position on the ground. You probably have your head in the sand if you don't know a little bit about Harry Sheasel already, but the numbers speak for themselves. He's averaging nearly 28 possessions a game. He's uh, naturally leading all the rising star contenders for disposals, kicks and meters gained and also rebound 50s. His best games other than his debut game, he had 37 possessions against the Blues, which is an outstanding effort for an 18 year old. And then in the most recent game against Sydney, he kicked a couple goals and had 25 possessions as well. So I think long term, this guy probably projects as a forward midfielder because I think in my opinion, your best players you want in that position. But in the short term, regardless of where he plays out, I think this guy is the absolute leading number one contender to win the Rising Star Award. Then in round two, we had Will Ashcroft nominated for a 31 uh, possession and one goal performance against the Melbourne Footy Club, which was a great performance because it sort of demonstrated his ability to play versus especially one of the best midfielders in the game. And uh, the impressive thing about Ashcroft as well, uh, despite potentially being a, a bit of an outside leading midfielder, he's a, certainly a balanced midfielder. His contested possession numbers are pretty solid for a first year midfielder as well. So he shows an ability to go and get the ball himself. He's number one amongst rising star contenders uh, for clearances. And he's had four games this year where he's had 28 or more possessions. So an absolutely prolific midfielder waiting to happen. And he might not be the favorite that we considered at the start of the year, but he's probably number Two. In round three, Ruben Jimby was nominated uh, for the West Coast Eagles against Fremantle in the Derby for a 20 possession game alongside eight tackles. And this guy is an absolute tackle machine, as commentators are already calling him. He's ranked second in tackles across the league. He had 12 tackles on debut, which is close to the record. I think Newcomb still holds that record. Um, and he had 16 tackles most recently against the Gold Coast Suns. He's also winning his share of clearances. He's the number one rising star eligible player for center clearances and third in clearances. Jinby's an interesting one. Uh, his apprenticeship into the AFL has been to stand at center bounces on the most difficult opponent and tag him out of the game and he's getting a great apprenticeship. So I don't consider him a genuine contender to win the Rising Star, but we're very happy at West Coast with the development of Ruben Jimby. In round four, we saw Machido Owens for St Kilda nominated for the Rising Star Award. And personally, this guy is one of my favorite players on this list. He had 27 touches and two goals against the Suns, which was the performance that saw him get nominated, but he's actually put together a very consistent season. He only played the seven games last year, which meant he was eligible uh, for this year's award. And he is obviously a year older than any of the players I've mentioned 
position so far. But we've seen a big improvement from him from year one to year two. He's averaging five more possessions and a whole extra goal per game. And he's actually become a very important player for St Kilda. He's kind of played this makeshift key forward in the absence of uh, some of the taller timber at St Kilda this year. And he's showed a great versatility to play as that undersized key forward, but he's also great at ground level as evidenced by his 27 possessions. He can push up and win the ball himself. He's the number one rising star for contested possessions as well. And he is eighth in the league for tackles inside 50, show, showing a great balance to his game. He kicks difficult goals. I'm a big fan of Machido Owens. Then in round five, we saw the Adelaide father-son, Max Michelani get nominated for a performance against Carlton in that big win. He's a bit of a shutdown defender with a bit of rebound as well. So comparatively a less sexy position than some of these other rising star candidates. But him coming on so quickly has been a pleasant surprise for Crows fans and a general surprise for uh, fans in general, I think. In particular, I thought at the draft, he went at about pick 25-ish. In my uneducated opinion, I thought that was on the early end, but it's proving to be a fantastic range for a player of his talents. The good thing about him is that he's sort of tall enough to be able to play on some taller targets and also versatile and agile enough to play on some of the smaller forwards in the competition as well. So he's played on a variety of opponents this year, uh, including Michael Walters, Junior Rioli, and then also Jesse Hogan as well. So a big variety in the opponents he's playing on and he's doing a fantastic job of it. Not a serious contender to win the Rising Star Award in my opinion, but probably because of the unsexy position that he plays, but you get the feeling he will be a good long-term player for the Crows. The round six nominee was Jai Cully of the West Coast Eagles, who was the number one pick in the mid-season draft last year, added five games to his tally and then I think a further four this year. He was nominated for his four goals and ten possessions against Port Adelaide and Cully is a big bodied midfielder that has great endurance, had a fantastic preseason, was tipped for a round one berth, sort of got injured at the wrong time and had to fight his way back into the team. Admittedly there's a lot of injuries at West Coast so it wasn't as difficult as it could have been. Due to those injuries he had to play a bit more of a forward role because of um, you know lack of other players in the side and kicking four goals in that game against Port is a great sign that he's got that versatility. Unfortunately, he's done an ACL and is uh, certainly not a contender to win the Rising Star Award, but it was a good reward for effort for Cully. Round seven's nominee was another second year player in GWS's Finn Callahan, who was nominated for his 26 possession game and 10 marks against the Sydney Swans when they uh, surprised them with a one point win in that derby. He was picked three last year to the Giants, a very, very highly fancy prospect, only played the five games last year and has found a more consistent game this year for the Giants. And he's lifted his output as well. It was 15 touches a game last year, up to about 21 this year. We know that he's a powerfully built uh, outside leaning midfield Fielder. Most of his possessions are uncontested, but that's because he has good skills and he can be quite damaging with the footy as well. For me, he still projects as a very, very high level midfielder. I don't think he's a serious contender for the Rising Star Award, partly because of the strength of the competition in, in Sheasel and Ashcroft, but you also kind of find they weight against second year players when they're comparing them to first year players. But regardless, still a very good long-term prospect for the Giants. In round eight, we saw Mateus Philippou nominated for St Kilda. He's become a bit of a high-flying forward uh, as a wingman option as well for the Saints. If you remember, he was one of my favorite prospects in last year's draft because I thought he had great X factor and he certainly demonstrated that at AFL level this year. Again, similar to Owens, probably had to play a bit more of a forward role presence, uh, partly due to being 18 years old and secondly because, but primarily because of the absence of some of the taller targets in that St Kilda forward line. But he was nominated for 13 possessions, six marks, four tackles and seven inside 50s against North Melbourne. And it was kind of a reward for a fairly consistent start to the year. He's actually equal second second amongst rising stars for his score involvements, which puts him level with Sheasel and just one behind Machito Owens. Philippou for me is still this, you know, high level potential player. He's a high flying forward at the moment, but I feel like he could be an exciting midfielder down the track. Round nine saw Bailey Humphrey nominated uh, for the Rising Star Award, and I think it was against West Coast. Yes, it was. One goal and 20 possessions he had in that game. He had five marks, he had five tackles, and he had five inside 50s. And again, to be fair, you know, it's not very hard to rack up those stats against West Coast at the moment. But it was actually the following week, which I think was an even more impressive performance from Humphrey against much tougher opposition in the Q clash against the Lions. He had 26 disposals, a goal, and seven in side 50s. He was picked six in last year's draft, pretty highly rated. There was talk of Melbourne trading up massively to try and get him. He was one of the sexier prospects in last year's draft and I didn't personally expect him to come on this quickly and he's got a good balance between contested and uncontested balls. So he, he's winning his own footy. He's a pretty big bodied player as 
well. But his ability to find the pill already is a really, really good sign for the Gold Coast Suns. And he's definitely actually an outside chance to win the award if he starts putting up more performances like those 26 to 27 touch games. And in round 10, we're going back to back with players that have gotten nominations against the West Coast Eagles. Josh Weddle uh, was an interesting story in last year's draft because Hawthorne traded up in what appeared to be a case of kind of overpaying to get a player in Josh Weddle who on the surface didn't appear like the sort of player you'd trade up for. And I say that respectfully, I'm just trying to map out what it looked like on draft day. But the Hawks clearly had their sights on this guy. They landed him with pick 18 and so far they kind of look vindicated. It is only early days, but his performance against West Coast was very impressive. He had 28 possessions and a couple of goals. He won two clearances and he had 500 meters gained. And I think the development of Weddle will be an interesting one. He was a bit of an undersized uh, key defender going into last year's draft. And there was talk that he would develop into a midfielder. So Hawthorne have taken that risk. He has the potential to become a very, very good big body midfielder. He's only played a handful of games so far, but so far so good. And he's showing these signs pretty early. So there you have it guys. That is a snapshot of the 10 rising stars uh, that we have so far. You do feel like Sheezel was the far away uh, favorite to win this award and then Ashcroft probably next behind him. But, you know, touch wood, if this injury is coming to play, then we could see an outside contender. Uh, the first two that come to mind, probably Machido Owens and uh, Bailey Humphrey as the next best contenders to win the actual award. But obviously praying for no injuries, that would be the worst thing. Um, and some of these players just flourish and continue their exciting development. But hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments who your favorite Rising Star nominee so far is, who you rate, who do you think is going to be an absolute gem. For me, Harry Sheasel's number one, but big fan of Owens and, of course, Philip Poo and Humphrey as well. As always, guys, appreciate your support on this channel. Hope you're enjoying it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you could like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.